How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week two. We've got Georgia State on the line, and a good chance, I think, of going 2-0 uh, here to start the season. Georgia State only a C-plus overall. Their best unit is their offense at a B-minus, which I think bodes pretty well for us. We are not negative on the turnover differential, so that might be the only time we see uh, that this season. And uh, let's see, they are 0-1. Who did they lose to? Georgia State Air Force, 17-20. Uh, to 20. Pretty close game there. Not sure how much info that we can take from that. We can go ahead and hop on into the recruiting. And uh, we've got a couple of guys to scout right off the bat. But I do need to uh, hope that we can find something good. Will Powers, 77 overall. Now, the guys that we added here, I'm not expecting. We will have a great chance at uh, picking up, but you never know. Oh my God, Joe Parsons is insane. I think he might be a Juco guy. No, <laughs> yeah, there's zero chance that we get the number two corner in the nation. I don't know how we got out of the board, but that would be insane. 97 speed, 94 acceleration. Uh, pretty solid coverage as well, if only. Uh, how about Roger Reed? Maybe a little bit easier of a get, still ridiculously good. And Curtis Kent, 66 overall. Doesn't seem like the worst running back. So we will go through kind of our normal look here at uh, adding and removing players. Right off the bat, Joe Parsons is not going to be obtainable. And Dave Cook, even though we're giving him the 500, that's not enough. But it does seem like uh, Travis Mansfield, there's a chance only losing 440 a week and not the craziest teams recruiting him. Uh, we'll go ahead and do some of that for a lot of these guys. Chris Johnson would be a difficult grab. So we won't waste our time there. And I have, uh, you know, it's been brought up that I haven't been the best at um, really showing off the recruits that we're going for. So while our points are already kind of given out for uh, this week, I might change a couple things. But uh, I think I've decided that we are going to kind of take a look more in depth at a recruit. Um, their stats and, and where they're from and what their name is after we have offered them a scholarship. So let's go through the guys that we offered already. Josh Gunn, the three-star wide receiver out of Ladson, South Carolina. He's a balanced wide out, um, so not really the quickest, which is a problem. But if he can catch well, he's got a spot on the team. Um, honestly, I'd rather have a receiver that can catch really well right now. Than a fast one because we have had a few too many problems with uh, drops. We've offered the Juco defensive end Alfred Schmidt from Avondale, Louisiana. Another three-star guy, which I feel like three stars is pretty solid for a Juco player. He's only a 65 overall, so not the greatest uh, transfer that we could pick up there. Um, but at that defensive end, I really like having a lot of acceleration. Um, his hit power is okay, his tackle is okay, um, but his block shedding a little bit better than those. Uh, ideally, everything would be increased, but uh, you know you could say that about any player. Matt Hodges on the offensive line from Piedmont, South Carolina. Uh, who knows if I'm saying that right? And uh, Antoine Horton, the guard, another offensive lineman from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Oh, both have scholarships. Matt Hodges, 6'7", 318 pounds. Antoine, 6'2", 270. Um, again, on a lineman, if you have great acceleration to go along with the blocking, that's fantastic. And how about Antoine? 80 pass blocking at only 66 overall. I like that quite a bit. In fact, he looks better, way better than Matt Hodges. Of course, Matt is a 60 overall tackle. We have offered Todd Dean, a four-star wide receiver from South Carolina. Um, he is, again... What was he? He's a possession receiver, and you, you can tell immediately by looking at his speed stats. Um, and, you know, for a possession guy, his catching stat being at 69 is pretty rough. <laughs> but his uh, spec catch is pretty impressive. His route running is okay. His release is okay. Um, let's just hope that uh, he's able to hold on to the easy ones as well. The last player that we have currently offered at the moment... He is Frank Bryant, another three-star guy, another South Carolina uh, guy. He's an outside linebacker, and we don't have the lead with him currently, but if we look at uh, the points behind, if we gave him points, we should be able to get that lead back from ECU. 
Um, but he's a 67 overall linebacker. I'm not super pleased with his speed and acceleration, but he's relatively strong. He's decent at tackling. I like the 77 play recognition. Block shedding could be a little bit better, but I, the coverage is pretty solid. And, you know, I, I obviously, again, you want all of those to be higher, but uh, for an outside linebacker, I'm definitely fine with uh, where he sits for 67 overall. Now, I will uh, go through this list and maybe make a couple of changes on points, but for now, that's kind of going to do it. And we can take a look here to see uh, if any chances at some chaos in the top 25 could happen. Oklahoma does play a number 20 Tennessee, number four or number three Clemson and number five Georgia will play each other. And then number four Florida and six Texas A&M will play each other. So guaranteed that two top six teams will take a loss this week. So that's awesome. Uh, Ohio State has to play a ranked Cincinnati. We then we've got, uh, let's see, Nebraska playing a ranked Miami. So overall, this uh, this could see some decent chaos. This is going to be the first game for a lot of teams. Uh, I want to see as few uh, undefeated teams as possible. With all that said, and we've already kind of looked at these rankings, let's go ahead and get into this game. As this is our first home game of the season, we will go ahead and just wear the standard home uniforms. Well, uh, we'll put Georgia State in... Uh, let's go standard ways. Our 81 is slightly better of an overall than their 79. Slightly better on offense, slightly better on defense. Uh, hopefully slightly better is enough to win us this game. In their first game, which was a loss, Georgia State did pretty okay. Very mediocre offense uh, with what looks like a pretty solid defense. You know, the number one pass defense in the country. But I believe, let's see, they played what? Air Force? Uh, I think they must be a triple option team. 313 rushing yards and 60 passing yards. Uh, kind of interesting. We look pretty solid. Uh, defensively, we are top 25 in the nation. And offensively, we're top 50. So that's looking pretty good for us. No injuries for either side. Their best players at that high 80 overall mark. Let's see if we can get this one done. So we are back at home. First time this year, they're going to go with tails on the kick, which will be a loss. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take the ball first. Diggs will be back to return this opening kickoff, and that is a returnable ball. Fielding it at the one yard line. Oh, I thought he dropped it for a second. Diggs uh, trying to follow the blockers, but they don't go enough out to the edge. So uh, return game not super strong to start this year. And Grayson McCall come out to lead the offense on their opening drive. We'll hand this one off to Reese White to start the game. There's a massive gap in Reese. Picks up 11 yards on first down. I think that they're going to be pretty afraid of our running game. Uh, so we're going to try to utilize that. And we'll go to the air with a play action. Blocking has been nice to keep us uh, alive on this one. But we're just going to pick up the couple yards that we can on the scramble. That was some pretty solid coverage on the first attempt where we were looking at the air. So we'll put it back on the ground. Reese, gonna, uh, Reese is going to pick up another three yards. Got a third and four to deal with now. We'll see if we can look for the short pass on this one. I'm looking Javon Hiley wide open at the 50 with a little bit of room to run. He's got us. Uh, what is that? To the 46 yard line, I believe. Sorry. Uh, I don't know how numbers work. The 37 is where we're at as we'll go with the counter on this first down. After the 25-yard pass play, Reese White has the corner and is going to break the first tackle and be knocked out of bounds after an 18-yard carry. We are moving the ball very well for, uh, for a first drive for us. Typically, we don't do nearly this well. We'll go to the air again on first down here inside the red zone. Tough throw. We had Dion Fountain. We just couldn't find him. That was a touchdown if the pass is a little bit more accurate. See if we can get Reese out to the edge on this one. The blocking pretty solid. Uh, and he's going to fall forward for a carry of eight. So Reese White with a great start to this game. Four carries for 40 yards. Third and two. I feel like it would be foolish to do anything other than the run the ball here. Reese going up the middle. Oh, he got two, but not quite enough still. Fourth and inches. We're going to go for this. 
The QB sneak might be the smart play uh, on this one, but we will hand it off to Reese and just allow the offensive line to do enough. That's a five-yard pickup and a first and goal for the Chanticleers. We're bringing the death by a thousand cuts offense as we're going to go with our third halfback dive in a row, and this time it sees Reese White finding the end zone. Four-yard touchdown run. That was a great drive. Let's hope the defense can all, you know, hold up their end of the bargain here. Here we go. One of our top 10 matches, Florida beats number six, Texas A&M, 20-14. That's a close game. Florida now starts the season 2-0. In the 4-3 to start this game, we're going to see a handoff. Oh, my gosh. Defensive line does a great job, and Destin Coates is going to lose three yards on the play. Unsurprisingly, the man making the stop on that play was the freshman defensive end, Sidney McCray. They're going to go to the air, and that was, wow, very good, apparently. All 13 yards needed, uh, they pick up there. And Georgia State, another team that's going to be playing us in their hurry up. We'll see the, the passing game. Maybe a little bit lucky that uh, the ball got thrown near enough to two guys that uh, that worked, but who knows. Uh, they're going to scramble, and he slides down for a gain of three. Switch to the zone now as we'll see if this can maybe work for us a little bit. They're going to throw over the middle, and it's a dropped pass. Cornelius Brown found his man, but he couldn't hold on to it. We've got a third and seven to contend with now. I'm expecting the pass. They do go to the air. Wide open over the middle is McCoy, and he's still on his feet. Breaks a tackle, running backwards. McCoy in a foot race to the end zone. Shelton should be able to get there inside the 10. He breaks that one, and Cornelius McCoy goes 61 yards into the end zone. Oh, broken coverage from us. And then we just could not bring him down. And uh, Georgia State ties this one up with 231 left in the first quarter. Well, let's hope that uh, the offense can answer back after that. That was a massive play. Uh, we're going to, of course, have Diggs bring this one out of the end zone. And this time he got some blocking. It's not quite enough to spring free, but he gets us almost to the 30. And I want to get greedy on this play. I'm looking downfield. Not seeing a whole lot. We get rid of the ball. Bedgood actually holds on to it, though. And uh, 14 yards. I thought for sure that was a pick, but it works out well in another first down for us. See what we can do here on the toss play. I'm moving Shamari Jones out for the edge blocking. It doesn't quite work. And Reese is destroyed as he gets to the line of scrimmage. On second down, we're going to continue to run here. I'm trusting the offensive line, and the trust is uh, seemingly well-deserved as Reese is able to pick up another six yards there. And on third down, we're going to go to the air, most likely looking for the running back, but, oh, I, I don't see anybody open. Scrambling. Can McCall get there? He's got the first down and a little bit more. Nine yards on that one. I, oof, I think I might have had somebody open, but it worked well enough to just uh, run for it. Thankfully, no fumble, and we will go to the air again. Five wide on this first down, and we'll just go the safe play to Mobley and, you know, give ourselves a more manageable second and third down. Three of four through the air now for McCall. Uh, we'll hand this one off to the running back, Reese White, and we'll see if the blocking can hold up well enough. And, oh my gosh, it's been so good. Up to 77 rushing yards as a team already. Still in the first quarter. We're going to just continue to bring this running attack as they just don't seem to be able to do anything against it. Nine more there. Now we're going to take a little bit of a risk here. Final play of the quarter. We're going with the option. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to trust myself to make that pitch. Maybe a mistake on the play calling, but I'm not going to give up the ball. That's for sure. So no pitch and uh, we just take a loss of two. But that's going to be the end of the first quarter. It's a tie ball game. We're moving the ball pretty well on this drive. The question is, uh, whose defense is it that's uh, going to step up first in this game? On third and three, we're bringing the run. Maybe we should go to the air here, but I got to trust. We get the blocks. White is able to get upfield. Ooh, he got kind of slowed down at the line again, but on the second effort gets it. And it's another first down for us. Back inside the red zone. We will go to the air. Oh my gosh, McCall just kind of getting... Uh, maybe battered around oh my gosh i didn't <laughs> i got stuck uh by my lineman there and then i tried to scramble uh, we broke the first tackle i wanted to slide i was trying to slide but we got held up and uh we give up the football that's that's a little bit frustrating uh i knew that a fumble was a possibility there i was spamming the slide button but we just can't get it off and georgia state gets the ball 
We're gonna bring a big blitz on first down. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't allow that. Oh, my coverage was terrible. Oh, and they get 14 yards. Man, I hate turnovers so much. Puts us at minus one on the day and the season as... Uh, I knew that that was going to be a problem. Both guys just standing there. Cornelius McCoy gets the 11-yard reception. First downs all over the place in this game. Unfortunately, not as many for us. Decent stop after they pick up the catch, but it's still a three-yard gain. And we will try to bring the blitz here on second and three. It looks like a draw. It is a draw. That's going to be a loss of two yards, so we've got them in this third down. Can we force the fourth and get the ball back? Sidney McRae, his second tackle for loss of the game. Sidney McRae is apparently an absolute monster. I'm expecting them to go to the air on this third down. Try and get some coverage. They're going deep. Bush is there. He's got the ball. And it's coming right back our way. Two turnovers now in the second corner. One for each team. And uh, Bush doing a great job of coming down that one. He's keeping his feet in bounds. And uh, a bit of an arm putt for Georgia State. I thought for sure that that was going to be a completed pass for them as we will just go ahead and hand Reese the uh, ball on first down and let him pick up six. Well, I mean, why not go to the hot hand? He's destroying in this game. This is a fantastic time to try to run the counter as, never mind, Reese gets just gobbled up in the backfield there. Uh, Taylor uh, took on his blocker and the ball carrier at the same time. This gives us a third and one to contend with now as, you know, I had it over the middle, but we're just going to run for this. Uh, <laughs> definitely not allowing McCall to take a hit. We'll step out of bounds before he fumbles it. And, uh, you know, we've got the first down. I'm not pleased with how it's happening, but we're moving the ball anyways. We're up to nine first downs as a team already. And I believe we're probably at about, oh my gosh, 100 yards rushing is... Reese White loses two more there. They're really uh, coming hard with the pressure to stop this run now. So we'll see if we can get the uh, passing game working. Bedgood. Oh, ho, ho. a little risky on the throw. He's able to come down with it and give us a manageable third. And I know that they've been bringing the pressure, but I'm going to trust the offensive line here to get the blocking done. Allow us to run for the first down. Another great, great carry for Reese White. Nine yards that time. Five wide as we'll go to the air on this play. The play action doesn't do much, and <laughs> I think I maybe could have thrown that over the top to Javon, but I cannot pass up all of that teal in front of me, and, you know, 18 yards on the scramble is beautiful. We will give this one to the wide receiver, and Hiley finally gets his hands on the ball this game. It's not a pass or reception, but a run, and he goes for eight yards. We could very likely be targeting him again here as we're going to throw. Oh, this is into double coverage. Okay, we got lucky there. Two minutes left in the half. We're going to go with the read option. And McCall's going to keep it. Grayson needs to get forward and thankfully is getting tackled in the right direction. Just picks up enough. It's a first and goal for us. The passing game has not been great so far in this game, but you never know. We'll toss this one out to the running back who has blockers and almost finds his way into the end zone. Great job. It's second and goal at the one. Offensive line starting to heat up. We are going to run this one, although I was planning on running it to the left. They've left kind of a gap on the right, so we'll run that direction. And, yeah, the linebacker has to step up, but it allows our linemen to get downfield far enough. It's a huge gap, and it's a touchdown for us. Seven-point lead now, a minute and 42 before halftime. We're going to need the defense to go ahead and step up on this drive as... We'll expect to see them go to the air quite a bit. And there's a quick pass to Cornelius McCoy again. First down, just like that. All right, got to start bringing the pressure again. We know that they're going to be passing. We need to get to this quarterback and make him a little bit more uncomfortable. Gunter just doing that. We get through, and it's the all-user sack. A loss of seven yards. And uh, Georgia State, I think, just took their first time out. We'll see now if we can get them into that fourth down situation. Second and 17, they move a man in motion. And they will go to the air. Quarterback's going to scramble. Uh, oh, my God. I don't. Why is this that? Why am I just so bad at this game that that always happens to me? He just runs past me. Uh, no tackle there, and they get it all. I'm actually so freaking bad at this game. It's so frustrating. <laughs> he scrambles. I know it's coming. Can't do anything to stop it. And thankfully he throws that one away. But 
Man, that is disheartening. A massive bra moment for us there. <laughs> this will bring the pressure again. Rushing six. We should get the quarterback. Yeah, stumbling backwards. It's going to be our second sack of the drive. It's third and 20, but what can we do to stop him? All I ask on this play is that if the quarterback scrambles, he doesn't run towards me. Because obviously we can't do anything. They're trying to burn the clock out, not expecting to uh, maintain possession. They've run a screen here. Bomar's able to dive behind, and now we'll take a timeout as it's 4th and 12 with 46 seconds left in the half. Diggs will be back to return in the pump formation. No expectations of a fake on this one. I want to return this ball, and we're going to definitely get the chance. Do we have the blocking? Diggs trying to stretch this one out to the edge. Maybe not worth it all that much, just burning the clock off for a 9-yard return. With two timeouts left, we have plenty of time to work the uh, field here. And this could be it. Not going to the deep row, but finding Dion Fountain, who picks up a block. And Javon highly just ran into him. If Javon gets out of the way, that could be a touchdown. We got to go hurry up, though. That's a little bit disappointing. I, I honestly thought that we had a touchdown. Doesn't seem to work that way. And again, just nobody open. I'm throwing this one away. They did seem to have great uh, pass coverage their first time out this season as uh, we'll throw a quick one to Dion and get out of bounds. 20 seconds left. It's third and seven. I really... Oh, this is perfect. They're bringing the safety up. I'm looking for Javon Hiley in this one. I'm throwing it up. I'm giving him the 50-50. Javon. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, that was... That's a bit of a yikes. Now we've put ourselves in a, a weird spot. It's a 57-yard field goal. I think that was the number. Uh, three mile an hour is a little bit of a tailwind. 15 seconds we're kicking this. Oh, we got almost all of it. Oh, we had plenty more distance to go, so we tack on three. Uh, not the best. And how about this? Another top 10 matchup. Clemson trailing by three to Georgia nearing halftime in that game. As far as this game's concerned, the last thing I want is for these guys to put up another, uh, like, Hail Mary touchdown in the half, and they're going to be throwing. Are they going to be? Yeah, they're definitely throwing. They just took a timeout. Six seconds left. We're going to send our guys back here, and I know for a fact we're going to see the Hail Mary. Everybody converging on one spot. The ball goes up. Can we get the pick? Oh, my gosh. That one was bouncing around for a long time. Finally hits the turf. Yeah, the clock says it's time to go to the locker room. We are up 10 Two score lead. They do get the ball to start the third quarter, but, uh, you know, things, I guess, looking in our favor. All right, Biscardi to kick this one off at the start of the half. Uh, that's going to be a, a great touchback. No chance they return that. I feel like my voice is starting to give out on me. Uh, who cares? First and 10, the defense needs to get this done. I expect them to be passing more, and they will. And the quarterback scrambles, and thankfully, I don't have to do it. Was that Sidney McRae getting the sack? It was his third tackle for loss this game and his first sack on the day as well. Oh, my gosh. This is a true freshman in his second game in his career. An absolute monster. They will hand this one off kind of up the middle. We're there to slow it down. You know, that was a good seven yards, I guess, but we managed to put them in that third and nine position, and now... They're looking deep. Will they throw it deep? They will. It's up to Bush, who already has an interception on the day. And oh my gosh. Ooh, they almost had that. Looked for a second like we would have a second pick. And then it looked like they were going to score a touchdown or have a massive gain. But instead, ball hits the turf. Fourth down comes. And so we're going to get a field or second punt of this game. Diggs. Okay. Making a little something of this. Can't quite get the corner. But still, 16 yards on the return. Let's start handing this one off to Reese White again. His first carry of the third quarter goes for three. And we'll look to the air on this one. That should be an easy completion. Fountain breaks the tackle and he scores. Nobody's going to catch him. And Dion Fountain holds on to it for the 43-yard touchdown reception. We're going to extend our lead to three scores. Uh, this game's going real well. Let's just hope that we don't start to choke because... It's starting to look very favorable for us. So that drive ends up working very well for us. Uh, <laughs> I love those big plays. We don't get them all that often. They're going to go over the middle, and the passing continues to work pretty well for them. 18 yards on that one. Let's see if we can bring another decent blitz on this first down. I feel like when we put pressure on him, it works, and yeah, we get there. Shelton 
Takes Coates down in the backfield for a loss of three. Will blitz again here, a rush of five as they step back to pass. Gunter had a sack on this play last time, uh, but doesn't need to do much there. I guess they throw up for a short pass and it's third and long. On third and 11, what can we do? The tight end goes in motion. We know this is gonna be a pass. It's not any sort of uh, screen. This is a bomb, Bush is there. Oh, right over his shoulder. He should have been able to get a hand on that, but they pick up the first down and it's a first and goal. That's disappointing. Bringing the pressure here uh, inside the five. It's a big blitz. Quarterback takes the sack. Okay, at least we've got ourselves out of a little bit more trouble, but that should have been our ball right now. In the goal line set as we're on a second and three, they'll hand this one out, out towards the edge. And oh my gosh, just some man like running there. Uh, wow. Takes it into the house. Nothing that we could do there. What a stiff arm. All right, Diggs. What can you do for us? This is definitely a returnable ball. Fielding it at the four. And he muffs it and stumbles. <laughs> that's, that's our returner of the year that just did that. Well, now we get to start the drive at the 11. So we'll try to run. And Reese gets taken down. <laughs> In the backfield, so uh, now we're at the 10. Second and 11 time. Got a throw for this one. They're bringing a lot of pressure outside the pockets, and we're patient. We're patient. We find bad good for the first down. All right. Offense can now settle down since we've got into the 20 yard line. We'll start to run it a little bit more, get back to our roots on this game, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that worked all too well. Read option on second and two. This one's going to go to White. Up the middle, he's got a lot of room to work with. And again, 10 more yards. He is just picking them up in chunks now. 106 for him on the day. First and 10. We're going to the air with a play action. I'm looking deep here. We're heaving it. Javon Hiley comes down with it. No! Oh, he got to the ground with the ball. Still in his hands, but then uh, popped out. Honestly, at the end of the day, it seems like uh, maybe we got lucky that that one didn't get picked off. Got to put it back on the ground to make sure that we get positive yards on second down. Of course, we get seven, and it's third and three. I mean, at this point, I don't know why I do anything other than run the ball because it is working so well. There's the first down on the ground. Uh, I mean, Reese is just having a game. First down, another carry for him. And the hole is massive. He gets another block and he gets into the secondary. That's 17 yards. Puts us over 350 on the game as a team. This is working well. Trying to keep these guys a little bit honest. We're going to go with the play action. And there's a nice safe throw to Isaiah Likely. And wow, he bowled over the first guy, but the second defender comes and stops him. Easy five-yard gain, though. We are nearing the end of the third quarter now as we'll run this one try to get it towards the edge we're lucky i think to get whatever we've gotten there back to the line of scrimmage and uh, i think we're gonna go into the fourth quarter now no reason to uh you know run more plays than we need to if we could just burn out the clock still a two score 10 point lead for us as we enter the fourth quarter i expect at the very least we'll get three points out of this drive so looking good on third and five I'm going to drop back to pass. Oh, no. Maybe making a mistake outside the pocket. I was trying to throw it to Likely. We get sacked. Fourth and 11. I got to kick this field goal. Oh, what a bummer. That was one of those instances now as the wind is coming at us where I felt like I could scramble, but just uh, the edge wasn't contained and we couldn't get away. Didn't get rid of it in time. Thankfully, kicker is destroying everything. I think Biscardi's our uh, uh, field goal specialist for the time being and wow what a leg 27 to 14 now we'll have him put this one in a returnable spot i want them to return this one so that we have a chance at keeping them inside the 25 it's looking like there's a decent chance gunter just got outrun there took a bad angle and uh well that backfired a little bit we're gonna start running in the nickel for the rest of this game. Uh, still gonna bring some pressure on the rush. Can we get the sack? Brown bouncing around inside the pocket. We finally bring him down. It's a loss of five. The defense doing a great job. And uh, I mean, the clock is going against Georgia State at this point. Second and 15. 
I expect them to go to the air, and they do. And we're trying to cover. I had to leave the, the middle of the field open to make sure that they didn't get that out route, and we give up 14 yards. That felt like a, a tough situation, but uh, it is what it is. And now we will bring the blitz again on third down. I just kind of felt like maybe we could get quick pressure. Instead, he finds Taron Stixon for 20 yards, and they're moving pretty quick here. Really only one safety on the play here, first and 10. They step back to throw. I don't know what's happening. That's the second time where we've had a couple of DBs in the area, and they just can't get it done. We're going to see now as Sidney McRae actually drops back into the pack, into the pass coverage. We're going to see how 3-3-5 uh, works as Cornelius Brown starts to scramble. We just weren't ready for that. These guys are absolutely unstoppable, apparently, on this drive. First and 10. Here's a handoff. Gunter was there but missed. And he stumbles his way forward for 10 yards. Literally every single play is just massive right now. Defense is worthless. It, like, literally, there, there's just nothing that we can do. They're going to hand this one off again, and completely untouched, Destin Coates goes into the end zone for a touchdown. It's going to be a six-point game, pending this extra point. So, in typical goon fashion, I've got this uh, game somehow to be way closer than it ever should have been. And Diggs is returning this ball, and he's got us, you know, okay field position. The two field goals that we've had to settle for have definitely... Uh, you know, lost or squandered what the defense worked so hard for a couple times, but you know, I guess we're just going to try to run the clock out here. The run is working incredibly well, and we're just going to see if we can use that to our advantage uh, because, I mean, if they can't stop it, why should I pass? Why should I risk an interception right now? Under three minutes to go in the game. Reese will get the ball again, and again, there's a bit of a gap for him to find three yards. And you know it's nice when even the bad runs seem to be getting at least three yards. This one's going for nothing, though. Reese able to fall forward, so we only lose a yard. And with 2.14 left, Georgia State takes their first time out. That gives us a third and eight to work with. Can we convert this one? I'm throwing a risky pass. Bad good. Oh, my gosh. Gets hit right as the ball gets there. We're kicking. Oh, man. We might lose. We're punting this ball. We absolutely have to punt this one away. The question is, can I get it? Deep enough in their territory. I don't know if they'll be able to field it. No, he gets under it in time, and we do hit him, but he's still on his feet. Breaks another tackle, and they will be starting this drive from the 35. I'm so worried. 202 left in the game. Well, six point game. They have the ball with decent field position. Can we get the stop? They're going to look, you know, for the first down. I was thinking it was going to be a deeper throw on first down, and they get it. Our safeties haven't quite been doing enough. So they get the first down awfully quick. It stops the clock. They get out of bounds. That's going to stop the clock. At this point, I desperately am hoping for an interception from the defense. Not sure if we'll get it. Quarterback looking to scramble here, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. I think Sidney McRae got up to him. No, Jared Clark did. This is a massive third down. I feel like they'll have to go for it on fourth down. We'll see if we can make that a, a you know possibility first as they will look for I don't know what was he pressured he must have been throwing off his back foot because that went to nobody fourth and six really hoping that we can get some pressure on this one I'm gonna try to jam up my guy at the line that'll slow him down quarterback scrambling and we're there it's the turnover on downs a minute and 24 two timeouts left for him I think a first down might be enough for us to get this win Hopefully, this game just shows that Georgia State is going to be very good this season and not that we're going to have some problems. On second and eight, we'll run it towards the edge a little bit. Some blocking is there. Reese kind of sidestepping his way past it. He gets four yards, and Georgia State will take their final timeout. On third and five, a first down seals the victory. Can we get it? Reese White, no. He's able to pick up a yard, but it's fourth and three. I think we're going to maybe try a field goal here. I'm not sure. All right, I don't, it's a 62-yard field goal. I don't think we can do that. The wind is kind of coming against us, so we're going to kick the punt here and hope that we can cough and corner him, letting the clock burn down as far as possible. I'm not sure if my angle is correct on this one, but we got to hope that it is because the defense needs to step up. They'll have no timeouts as we snap the ball. We got all of it. That's going to be at least inside the 10. There's a flag down, though. Could this be on them? Clipping, that's going to send him backwards a little bit more. That is so useful. 
They will start their drive at the two. So our initial punt would have made it to the four yard line, but the clipping sends them back to the two. And we know that this is going to be a pass. Can we do anything to stop it? I'm going to get on a defensive lineman. Plenty of time to throw. Finds a man. It's Cornelius McCoy. Uh, he gets out of bounds. 30 seconds left here. We got to remember here that a first or a touchdown wins the game for him. I don't want to use my timeouts though. 29 seconds. I'm bringing the pressure with Porter. Rushing five. Can we get that? Bush drops the pick. Oh, it would have ended the game. It's his third deflection. His second dropped interception. And this now gives us a second and 10 with not a whole lot of time. Again, I'm going to bring some pressure. I'm going to jam my guy up the line and then uh, try to come in at the quarterback. And this isn't great news. They pick up the first down, so that'll stop the clock. I'm, continu I'm going to continue to bring this pressure on the quarterback as they spike the ball there. 14 seconds to go. I am all too prepared for this heartbreak. Second and 10. They're going to go to the air. They find Dixon who gets out of bounds. That's 16 yards and 10 seconds on the clock. It stops the clock. Oh, this is so frustrating. Let's see. Can we just stay alive? Not able to jam my man up the line, but we're bringing pressure. He's got a man wide open over the middle. The tackle is there. There's five seconds on the clock. Oh, the ball stops momentarily as well. I don't want to take the timeout, but I feel like I almost need to. Backing up everybody. They're going to spike the ball. Four seconds. This is it. Final play of the game. I think that we're going to see a Hail Mary here. They are throwing it into the end zone. We come down with it. Stokes gets the interception. Oh my gosh. As time expires, it should have never been this close. They should have never had the opportunity. But thankfully, we survive at home to go 2-0 on the season. Oh, that is rough. <laughs> I hate when this happens, and it seems like it happens all the time. Reese White had a career game, I believe. Um, we get it done, but that should not have been close. Oh my gosh. Around the country, I saw it unfolding. I didn't want to speak of it because I was worried that I would make it come true, but Wyoming beats number seven, Oregon, 41 to 20. Oh, that's not good for the Ducks. Number seven loses. And that's not the only top 10 team. So I think at least three top 10 teams or top 15 or something losing this week. Uh, as we can see, we held Georgia State to 30 rushing, but they put up 337 uh, through the air. Meanwhile, we went 212 on the ground and 158 on the air, winning the turnover battle uh, and just managing to outlast. Reese White ends up 32 carries. That's a lot for 155 yards and two touchdowns. And Derek Bush, four tackles. Uh, an interception, then a couple of clutch pass breakups as well. I'm surprised they don't give that to Sidney McRae on the defensive side of the ball. The freshman doing some work. It truly is a nail-biter in Conway uh, as we move to 2-0, and we will advance our week. Uh, you know, next couple of episodes are going to be pretty rough. At Clemson, and then at Auburn. We'll see, uh, did Clemson lose to Georgia? And it looks like it happened. Uh, Clemson loses their opening game. They drop to number eight in the country. Uh, unfortunately, now they are going to be absolutely pissed off. Hopefully they don't try to take us out with uh, with all that rage. Uh, let's see what happened last week. So Florida beats Tamu. They move up to second from fourth. Uh, any other losses? Clemson loses to Georgia. We knew that one of those was coming. Texas A&M loses to Florida. Nebraska loses to Miami. So they dropped a couple of spots. Cincinnati loses to Ohio State. Oregon loses oh, disgracefully to Wyoming. And then we have, let's see, Tennessee losing to a now number three Oklahoma. Who dropped out? Louisville and Texas Tech. Um, nothing too crazy. A lot of teams re receiving votes at this point, uh, but nothing, nothing too absurd outside of the you know big matchups that we saw in this upcoming week. We do have some more ranked matchups, so more chances for these teams to lose. And you know, Clemson could they start the season 0 and 2? We're gonna hope so. But for now, that's gonna be it for this episode. 
if this past game was any sort of indicator as to how the Clemson game will go, then at least it will be close. Uh, you know, I feel like throughout all of the NCA uh, episodes I have on, on any dynasty I've done on YouTube, almost every single game has been, you know, within two scores. So that's our goal. Can we stick to within two scores to a very good Clemson school? Or will it just turn out to be a blowout? I, I really hope not. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, please tell me in the comments below what you thought about the game. Were you thinking that we were about to lose it? Because I 100% thought that we were going to lose that game on the final drive. And also, if you enjoy the content or if you like the video, please feel free to like the video and maybe consider subscribing so that you know when new videos are posted. Also, feel free to follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster and also over on Twitter and join maybe our Discord. Those links are down in the description below. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. It was a fun one, although a little bit stressful. And uh, my name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.